So I'm Skalk Tevelers from RFRE Experts, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the increase in production uh, through the use of RFID technology and data analysis. In a lot of instances, we get a we get the the uh, question from customers uh, on how do I start or how do I implement the system um, that can work for me. And uh, the first is basically the first step is to start with tagging your animals. Um, the reason for this is to uh, previously people um, farmed on a on a whole on a on a herd average basis where they where they monitored the complete herd. And we worked on averages where in a precision farming system, we monitor the results of each animal in the herd. And uh, this is the reason why we need each animal to be tagged with the individual number so that we can track their performance in the group. So the tags that we use here is, uh, is the Datamars Z-Tag range. Um, Datamars is the manufacturers. It's a Swiss-based uh, tag company. Uh, RFID is the supplier and Afri, AfriVet um, is uh, assisting us with the distribution of the tags. Also available in all the uh, participating codes like BKB, um, etc. The identification that we use on sheep specifically is firstly we start with a visual um, management tag. As you can see at the bottom, uh, we customize the tag with your management number, which is lasered onto the tag so it go, don't go off. And uh, it's physically burnt into the tag so it lasts for the lifetime of the animal. And then on the right hand side here, we use um, a 25 millimeter FTX um, electronic ear tag. Um, the reason why we use um, both these ear tags is for if, uh, especially on stud animals or commercial animals, if you lose an ID, you always have the other ID as a backup. Um, and then you can just do a tag change in the system. The next important step is that you weigh your animals. Now, in order to do that, you need um, a good uh, weighing scale indicator. Uh, what we recommend here is the TrueTest XR5000 indicator. Um, it's easy to use, it's user friendly and um, you can program it and customize it according to your needs. And we can also um, assist you to do this setup uh, to help us to, to analyze your data and to store the data on the, on the indicator itself through the use of the favorite menus. It will help you to record the correct data sets, um, which we use in the analysis, which I'll show you later on. The next uh, item that you would need is um, an RFID reader. And this really makes your data collection easy. We've got a variety of readers that we can, that we can offer. Firstly, we've got the APR 600, um, which is uh, we can, we can um, load all the tasks up front onto the reader. So you can just do like registration, lambing, mating, or whichever task you are doing on the day, you just select the task and continue to gather the information. Then also with uh, it's also integrated fully with Bengu Farm Sheep and Goat. Then we've got a two test XR2, um, XRS2 uh, stick reader, um, or also a very user friendly reader. You can customize your own menu on there and you can save favorites on this reader as well. And then we've got an entry level reader, which um, can either just via Bluetooth scan to the um, to the scale indicator or scan directly into an Excel spreadsheet, either on your laptop or your, or your phone. So this is basically the, the tracking one, uh, which is the entry level reader. Um, then what we do is we, sorry about that, we um, also what you would be needing is, uh, is, a, is a weighing crate. So this is the options that we've got available in our range. Firstly, we've got the metal one, which is the entry level crate fitted with the MP600 weigh bars. It can draft in three directions. The next, uh, um, the next option is the fully aluminum version. Uh, this, complete, um, or this complete weighing system weighs about 70 kilograms. So two people can very easily load it onto a vehicle and offload it. And uh, this is for mobile weighing. And then we've got the, the big auto drafters, which is a stud master. Um, you can either get this um, as a standalone or on a trailer. Um, 
and if it's working at full capacity, you can weigh, identify, and sort about 600 animals per hour. Then, um, with all the hardware in place, um, it's important to know what data do we need to collect. So, um, firstly, what we have to do is to register all the animals on the system. So the, uh, the procedure there that we follow is you scan the, 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 the RFID tag, you link the RFID tag and the visual ID in the, in the system. So if you do lose, lose an ID on an animal, you can easily replace it through the menu on a tag change. You record the date of birth, birth of the animal and also the management group, the status of the animal, whether it's a stud animal or commercial animal, um, and then any other relevant information uh, about the animal that you've got available. Um, the second step is when you, um, I, I specifically chose an a, a intensive farming um, scenario for this. Um, this is when you do mating or artificial insemination. Um, firstly, on the, on, we load the rams into the into a reader. So what you do, you select the ram on the reader, you scan the U, and, and then you also type in the date of mating, and then it will actually do your URAM uh, pairing in the system. The second step, what you do is to, uh, when you do pregnancy scanning, is you uh, scan the EID of the U. Um, the system will automatically um, record the date. You would select the status where it's, uh, whether she's pregnant, yes or no, whether she's pregnant with the single twins or triplets. And what's very important is um, whether, she, whether she got pregnant on the first cycle or the second cycle. So with the, um, in other words, when you select for, for natural fertility, this is very important to, um, to, to select all your first, the, the use that got pregnant on the first cycle. Um, then the following step is when the U gave birth is to, uh, to tag the lambs and to, we call it mothering up. So um, you tag the lamb with both a VID and an EID, and then you select, uh, you scan the, the EID of the U, and then you also, you select the, the number of lambs, say for instance, she's you, got triplets, you scan the EID or the electronic ID of the uh, lamb, you type in the visual ID, you would then also type in that it's a, a, a male or female, if there's any deviations, you can make a note uh, then, then, and then you can also take the birth weight. Uh, that's an optional field that you can complete. So, um, and then also we record all treatments and vaccinations by just scanning, uh, scanning the EID of the animal, select the treatment that you do, and then specify the, the medicine that you used. Then also any other performance related data. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just show you a little video of where we take fleece weights and link it to the specific U and we'll explain the relevance of this to you um, when we start with the data analysis part. So there you can see the, um, the sheep's almost done and he scanned the EID that's been given through the ID number to the scale. And there they record the scale and there is the sample that goes to the wool testing bureau for, um, for the micron testing of that specific fleece. So at this stage, we, um, we, we can then uh, start calculating the wool income of this specific animal. Okay, so that's basically the hardware that you would new, use, the tags that you use and the, um, and the data that you, that you need to uh, record. So now I'm going to take you into the analysis of the data and um, how to make some of the management decisions. So firstly, um, we, we evaluate the performance of, of the sires, we evaluate the performance of the use, and then we also evaluate the performance of the off offspring. Um, but for this, for today's um, session, I'm just going to I'm just going to focus on the um, evaluation of the use. Um, a very important aspect that uh, very often gets neglected is the monitoring of your replacement use. So this is typically um, um, graphs that you would get, um, and also important to remember 
that by monitoring your replacement use and seeing to them that they, that you feed them well and that their growth curve is on 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 track is um, the the replacement use is is the factory of the future for your farm it's very important to to look into this in very good detail and to actually manage this with a close eye um, then also um, the, um, the we also look at your herd composition um, that is why we we, we, we we record the birth weights um, when we recorded the data. This is a, a scenario where this uh, specific client had 432 ewes in this group. Um, he ran, ran into a problem because 51% of these ewes were old. And uh, the, the challenge for him now is where does he get suitable ewes to replace these ewes with? Um, also, what we do is we calculate when the uh, production of the use actually start getting getting less or decline. It's normally around about 5.5, 5.7 years. Um, then the production of that use starts declining. So in this case, this was the uh, this was the result. Um, and then what's very important is to look into. Um, for, for instance, in this case, I used a scenario where we used wool sheep. Um, so there's two income bearing factors, which is wool and meat. And uh, what we did here was we, uh, we, div we took this 432 ewes and um, in the video that we showed where we took the fleece weights and also the microns, we could calculate and add a, a specific value for each uh, ewe. And we could also rank them from top to bottom in terms of income uh, for the wool component. So what we did was we grouped the whole herd of 432 in four groups, in four quartiles. So the first quartile's um, average um, income for wool was 740 rand and 90 cents. Um, the second quartile, 588, 512, and the, the fourth quartile was only 402 rand. So you sit with a, with a variance in this group of 338 rand per year uh, per you for wool income, and that is also that represents an efficiency difference of 46 percent. So that's quite a huge amount of money that you can um, that you lose and not knowing what the what the variance in your in your herd is. So it's important to determine that. And at the bottom, we had uh, the the average weights of these groups as well. Um, the second income bearing factor is, is uh, lamb, la the, the um, in lamb income produced. And what we saw here is we, we had to basically, um, we had to, to standardize it and the figures, and also we had to multiply it with a, with a fixed factor to actually compare apples with apples. All of, the, all of these lambs on the wool side, or all of the, and um, all of these has been, um, has been, um, a bread and um, bought up in a in a, in a intensive system, and um, yeah, you can look at the at the wool in, at the lamb income. The top group here produced one thousand two hundred eighteen rand on average. They weighed sixty three point seven two kilograms, and then the bottom group over here brought in only six hundred seventy rand per um, lambing season. So yeah, you sit with a variance of five hundred and forty seven rand per lambing season per year uh, between that group and that group. And your efficiency difference is basically 45% between your first quartile and fourth, fourth quartile groups. So quite a massive uh, income difference there. So what we did then is we combined these two um, uh, totals. In other words, we, we called it the combined income per year. So what we did was we, uh, we, we said if a ewe is, for instance, strong on wool, but weak on, on, on lamb income and vice versa, we would give her another chance uh, to see if she can, um, if she can um, uh, if she still render a good income. And um, here what we saw was the, the total income uh, for the first quartile group was 1,815 rand versus 1,270 rand and seven rand for the fourth quartile group. So the variance here is 607 rand per year per year. 
and the uh, efficiency difference of 33%. So one, basically one third. Um, what we did then was to say, um, if this you over here is very, is very, she brought in a lot of money, but how much did she eat to actually produce that income? So what we did was we divided the income by the U life weight. And um, what we saw here is the top quartile brought in 30 rand and 90 cents per live weight kilogram uh, versus, the, versus the fourth quartile that brought in only 18 rand and 82 cents. And interestingly enough, what we found was the, over here, the, the, the top group, the uh, average weight of those shoes were 58.42 kilograms. And the, the weight, the average weight of the uh, fourth quartile group was 68,38 kilograms. So this is not to say that um, heavier use are bad or anything. In this scenario, that was the case. And this is also how you can determine the uh, optimum you weight for your farm, for your breed, um, and for your area. So this would, this would differ for breeds, farms, and then for the, for the various areas. So we sit here with a variance of uh, 11 rand and 37 cents, and the efficiency difference here is 38%. So quite a, quite a, quite a big difference there. Um, of, of 11 rand 37 per live weight kilogram that, that these shoes brought in. Um, what we then looked at was the, um, that we, we gained some more insight into this. We looked at the U, for instance, that was um, rank number one. She brought in the most income. Um, she was number one on lamb income, but she was number 166 on wool income. So she was good on lamb, bad on wool. And the second happened with the second U, and here you can see quite a few of these. But then what we also found was these U's over here. Um, they were third overall. She was seventh on lamb income and second on wool. This one ninth and 14. So these are much more balanced sheep than these ones. So they are strong on both components. And this also then is basically the use that we would like to select because they are actually the top use in that um, in the flock. So it doesn't matter what happens, they produce well on both aspects um, that, that contribute to the income line. Um, then when we looked at the uh, flock, the, the efficiency distribution, um, the top U in that group brought in 41 rand and two cents per life weight kilogram. And the weakest performance brought in only nine rand 52 per live weight kilogram. So you sit there with a variance of 30 rand and 22 cents, which um, is equal to an efficiency difference of 76% between the top U and the bottom U. Interestingly enough, uh, this U over here, the top U, was actually bought by the owner on an auction for slaughter price. Um, she was culled by a previous owner, not knowing that he was selling a very good ewe because he didn't have any records in place. And he basically sold one of his top performing animals uh, based on looks. Um, so that's the danger if you, if you do not measure and you do not have records of each individual sheep, you will never know what you sell. Um, if we look at this and if we need to do some um, selection and management decisions, so firstly, the red, the red bars over here, these are the use that we must reconsider whether we want them on, on the farm and what strategy are we going to put in place uh, um, to manage them. So firstly, they, do, they can still play an important role in our flock. So either by carrying um, embryos or you can do terminal crossings with them um, and produce lambs specifically aimed for feedlots. Or the really, really bottom enders, you can actually manage them out of the flock. You can put a strategy in place to do that. The orange bars over here, um, you can improve through selective breeding. Um, this would help you, this would help a lot um, to, to actually um, to improve them. Um, through, um, through selecting specific sires. 
um, and to actually um, to do corrective breeding and to try to improve their performance. And then the green bars over here are the top performers on the, on the farm. So the decision here is to select your, your breeding stock from here, your, your, your replacement use selection. And then also later we're gonna show you and talk a little bit more about the sexing of semen and then um, also take decisions out of which of these top, top performing use you would like to breed um, stud rams and which do you want to use to, to, um, to breed ewe you, you lambs. Um, and then if you've got um, a surplus uh, a replacement use of this top quality, you can always have a strategy in place to do something to sell them off as well at a premium price. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that now. So um, if we need to look then at focus areas and management decisions that needs to be made. So first of all, is the bottom enders over here, what do we do with them? So the best um, strategy or good alternative that you can do, because you've got all the records of these animals available, is to make use and, or, uh, of the digital platform uh, of PKB. You can actually, the animals, the benefit of the system is you can upload this um, details onto the, onto the digital platform. The animals stay on the farm uh, until they are sold. And uh, this is basically just a picture of what the digital platform looks like. Um, then the second one is the improvement of these, um, uh, of the orange bars over here, of this group over here, is um, there you're gonna need some um, selective um, sires that you're gonna be using to actually enhance um, these animals' performance over here. And, there you, and also on the other side, you will need a platform if you do have some surplus replacement used to sell of which you've got good records of um, at the end, which you would hope to sell for premium. You can always go to the digital stud auctions and you can market those animals there. And you can also buy your rams on the digital stud auction um, because these animals all have a full catalog available. And um, you can then select the animal that you would like to, um, to make those use with that is going to complement the best. This is just a short video of what a digital auction looks like. Okay, so, and then um, lastly, what we need to do is uh, if we need to, so at the bottom end, we need to actually get rid of the, of the really bad performing animals. And at the top end, we would like to, to uh, improve our genetics through selective breeding and breeding decisions that we have to take. So um, what we have to do, if we look at our overall strategy first, these use that are not performing in terms of, of, of a production use that needs to stay on the farm, you can either use them to carry embryos of the, of the top performing use, or you can use them to do terminal crossings with them to breed lambs then specifically for, uh, for feedlots. Uh, and then the improvement over here, you can actually, um, by means of artificial insemination, you can actually um, make these use up with uh, specific rams that are gonna enhance their, their performance. And then with these use over here, you can choose then if you would like to use um, specific sex semen, say for instance, you would like to, to, to breed your, your, your rams from the top, uh, top three or four groups over here. And then, um, and you, you lambs from the rest. And then also, if you would like to sell our breeding stock, um, you can sell that at a premium because you've got full records of those animals and their performance. Um, and then also when, I, when I'm gonna, what, what we did in this, in this section was basically to identify the top performing use, the second uh, group, the third group, and then your fourth group. So typically, this is your bottom 25% would, uh, would, would be the embryo carriers, 
or, or through means of artificial insemination, you can um, mate them up with, um, if, if for instance, uh, crossbreeding rams and breed animals specifically for feedlots. And then through artificial insemination, you can actually um, take your two middle groups and you can enhance their performance through specific breeding. And then your top 1%, you can either decide to, um, to, to get, to get uh, embryos from them and transplant that, or you can either then um, artificially inseminate them with uh, semen of a specific um, ram, which has been sick by RAMSEM. And uh, Dr. Fani Stein will also tell you next um, more about this in the next presentation. Thank you.